All right, let's work through how to make a diverging bar chart. Uh, I'm gonna start out by loading two packages, uh, the tidyverse and the scales package. Um, tidyverse we'll use for plotting, other data manipulation. Uh, the scales package we'll use specifically to um, make the text labels uh, that look good on our plots. Um, all right, first we're just gonna start by making some fake data. Um, so I am running set seed, which will make it so that if you run this code, you will get the exact same results because then uh, when I run this here, I am making uh, fake data. I'm calling it school quality. And it's just kind of creating some random uh, data, you know, that um, is about school quality. Let me actually just run it and show you. So we've got um, various schools. We've got an ID column, which I don't think we actually use. Um, and then we've got school names. I just chose some, uh, some schools close to me here in Portland, Oregon in the U.S. Uh, and then, um, you know, people's opinion of them. You know, so a random sample of very bad, bad, good, and very good. All right, so let's now go ahead and make a bar chart. We're going to make kind of the default bar chart that ggplot will make. And to do that, I'm just gonna summarize this data. So I'm gonna make a new data frame called School Quality Summary, um, which will just look at each school, a summary of the responses ranging from very bad to very good. So let me go ahead and run this. And I'm assuming if you uh, are watching this that you know kind of the basics of data wrangling, um, this type of thing, as well as data visualization. Um, so let me go ahead and run this. And you can see what I end up with, for example, for Alameda, is I have the school, the opinion, number of answers, the percent of answers, and then I also made a nice label, percent answers label, uh, which was here using the percent function from the scales package. Um, and I have that for every school. Okay, so if I take this data, I can now make a bar chart. Um, and if I run this, um, let me go ahead and run it. You'll see I end up with a plot that looks like this. How good is the education at your school? So you can see, for example, for, uh, let's actually take Alameda. We've got very good, uh, well, very good here is 24%, then very bad is 18%, then good is 24, 34% um, for bad. Obviously there are a number of issues. For right now though, what I just wanna focus on is the fact that this is a stacked bar chart it'll automatically make everything go to 100%. Um, and so that's why all of the, the bars or the stacked set of bars for each school is the same exact length. Again, adds up to 100% for all the responses. However, because we're wanting to make a uh, diverging bar chart, we'd like to have all of the negative responses, that is the bad and very bad, kind of on the left side and then all the positive responses, so good and very good, on the right side. Um, so we need to kind of align things so that instead of just stacking and ending up at 100%, instead there's kind of a center point and they, they go uh, in either direction. Okay, so to make a basic diverging bar chart, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing, except um, I'm gonna create a, a slightly different data frame. So the data frame, I'll call it school quality summary diverging. I'm gonna start with my school quality summary, which was this, but I'm gonna do a couple things. This line here, line 76, uh, I'm gonna change the percent answers using an if else. And I'm saying, if the opinion is good or very good, then leave percent answers as percent answers. So that's that right there. If, however, it's not one of those, in other words, if it's bad or very bad, then we'll take the inverse, so we'll do negative percent answers, okay? Uh, and from there, then, I'll recalculate the percent answers label based on that. All right, so if I run that, you can see now I've got, um, for example, for bad here, it's minus 0.34, minus 0.18, and our percent answers label is uh, not what we want but we'll, we'll deal with that. Um, so if I run this, you can see now it's done what we wanted, right? Like it's put that center point 
and everything that's bad is on the left side, everything that's good is on the right side. Um, so you can see, for example, for Alameda, we have, well, showing up as negative 34%. We'll deal with that, like I said, in a second. Uh, very bad here is minus 18%, then 24% for very good, 24% uh, for good. So a few, a few issues here, right? Um, there's the labels, there's the order, uh, and the order of the legend, the order, I should say, of the bars, as well as the order of the legend, and we need to make everything uh, work. So let's deal with these one at a time. So thinking about those positive and negative labels in the previous chart, um, the labels for bad and very bad were negative. So I'm gonna change that. Uh, I'm making a new data frame called uh, school quality summary diverging good labels, and I'm taking the school quality summary uh, diverging here, so this, and I'm saying first for the uh, labels, let's take the absolute value of percent answers. So in other words, if it's minus 0.34, it'll turn into uh, 0.34. So let me even run it actually just that. So uh, zero point, so, so sorry, the percent labels, now you can see it's 0 0.34 for that, for example. Um, but the other thing I wanna do then, same thing as I've always done, is use that percent function to make that instead of 0 0.34, make it 34%. So if I run that and run that, you can see now I have good labels. So I'm gonna do the same thing, um, run that. And you can see now I've ended up uh, with my bar chart. Um, and the nice thing about this diverging bar chart is now I have 34%, 18%, not negative 34% and negative 18%. Okay, next thing let's deal with is we wanna reorder our bars. Um, it is putting them in alphabetical order. Um, so that's why we have bad, then good, then very bad, then very good. So to put them in alphabetical order, uh, we're gonna do some work on the data before we plot it. So I'm gonna be making a new data frame called School Quality Summary Diverging Right Order. Uh, and I'll start with the, the previous data frame, so I'm doing that kind of every single time. I'm using the FCT relevel function, which will relevel our um, plot so that it is, um, or sorry, it will relevel the opinion variable so that it actually has an order. In other words, it's not just using alphabetical order. And then I'm gonna use FCT uh, uh, REV to reverse the order because we actually are gonna want it reverse because uh, we're using coord flip here on line 171. Okay, so if I do that and that, uh, it doesn't really look any different except if you look right there, opinion is now a factor. And so let me run the same thing again. Everything is the same except I'm using this school quality summary diverging right order. And when I do that, now I've got the green is very bad, which is good. We want that all the way to the left. Next is bad, perfect. Then good, then very good. Okay, so our order, the order of our bars looks good. Um, and we've done that again using factors. And, and I should say the, the functions that I'm using here are from the four cats package. All right, so that's worked. However, if I scroll back up here, you'll see the legend is not uh, aligned, right? I mean, sorry, I shouldn't say it's not aligned. It's not in the right order. Um, it shows very good, then good, then very bad, then bad. Um, so that's not what we want. So to make the legend match, um, I'm gonna do, I'm not changing up my data at all. But if you take a look at line 200, uh, I am actually setting my breaks manually. So I'm saying I want the breaks to be very bad, then bad, then good, then very good. So let me run that. And you can see now perfect. Now my um, legend matches it. So very bad comes first, then bad, then good, then very good. All right, excellent. Um, so we've got that taken care of. The one final thing I am going to do is I want to improve my colors um, because this is a diverging chart. Um, and so, um, you know, very bad and very good are obviously on opposite directions. And bad is, you know, not quite as bad as very bad, right? 
So what I'm thinking is I should have one color for very bad, one color for very good, and then bad should be uh, a lighter shade of the color of very bad, and good should be a lighter shade of the color of very good. Uh, so to do that, I'm keeping everything the same, except as you can see on lines 229 through 235, I'm changing it. So I have, uh, instead of using, I was using um, Scale Fill Veritas D to give me a nice colorblind friendly palette. Um, but what I actually wanna do, I'm gonna just set these manually. So I'm using Scale Fill Manual and I'm setting my breaks again, same thing. But here I'm actually setting my values uh, manually. So I'm saying I want my values were very good should be equal to dark orange three. Uh, bad is equal to, to orange, good is equal to deep sky blue, and very good is equal to deep, deep sky blue four. And these are part of the, the named colors for R. Uh, so if I run that, you can see I've ended up with a much better looking palette. So I've got very bad here in that kind of dark orange, then bad in the light orange, good in the light blue, and very good in the dark blue. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how to make a diverging bar chart in R and ggplot.